<laughs> I just finished my playthrough of The Quarry, which is Supermassive's choice-based horror game. Is this spiritual successor to Until Dawn all it's cracked up to be? Let's talk about it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Crossplay. I'm Pastor Mark, and I want to talk to you about The Quarry, which is this new horror game that revolves around choice. As the story progresses, you guide your characters through these different circumstances and conversations and scenarios, and can either build or break relationships and end up getting you through the night with everyone alive, or everyone dying by the end of it. And so here at the start, I wanna do a few things. First, I wanna let you know that I'm not gonna show any of my gameplay because I don't wanna spoil anything. If you end up deciding to play this game, I don't want you to look at the footage that I would show and have that spoil some element of the story because the footage that I would show would either spoil the element of the story or it would just be really boring, and I'll get to that later. And second, before we dive in to analyze some of the aspects of the game, like the story, the graphics, the gameplay, and things like that, I kinda wanna do a PSA content warning for those that might be curious. As you know, I'm a pastor, and as a pastor and a Christian, we sometimes have to wrestle with this question of whether or not we should play a game like this. And so if you're curious about whether or not you should play this game, I wanna walk through some of the content that you'll find in the game, and then you can make that choice. Because as always, I wanna let you know, I am not God, I am not your God, I do not get to make the decision of whether or not you should or should not play a certain game or watch a certain movie or listen to specific types of music. So my goal is not to prescribe to you that you should or should not play this game. But I do think this is a conversation worth having because maybe after we discuss the content a little bit, you'll find yourself saying like, nah, maybe this isn't a game for me. Maybe this isn't going to really benefit my relationship with God. Or maybe you'll be on the other side and you'll think, eh, there's really nothing there that I'm concerned about. Uh, I think I'll just jump into it. And if you're on either side of that, that's great, but at least you'll be informed and able to make that decision. So when we come to the question of should Christians play this game, again, I'm not really looking for a yes or no answer. I just wanna kind of put the content out for you and you can make that decision. So in terms of the content, what do we find here in this game? Well, it shouldn't surprise you that this game is pretty violent. It's a it's a horror game. It's kind of, a, it's kind of an homage to those old teenage horror flicks. So there's some pretty violent, gruesome deaths in this game. You have this handful of camp counselors that find themselves in this awful situation of life and death and near-death circumstances, and your goal as the gamer is to get them through that. And the hook of the game is that the game is based on choice. So you come across forks in the road or different conversations where you can choose how to handle it. And based on those choices, your character will either live or meet a pretty gruesome end. But even if you play the game perfectly and you're able to keep all of your characters alive, you'll still see some pretty gruesome violence in the game. So that's just something to be aware of. And in terms of other content in the game, there's a lot of cussing, a lot of F-bombs, there's a lot of sex jokes and innuendo. There's not sex scenes, but there's like inappropriate sexual illusions, characters getting in their underwear, jumping in the leg. So there's stuff like that. Again, it's, it's an homage to those teenage horror flicks. So that stuff is kind of sprinkled throughout the game. So again, don't take this as me saying that you should not play the game. I mean, I played the game. I played through the whole game and I actually enjoyed the game for the most part. But I just want you to be informed about the content you're stepping into so that if you want to avoid some of this stuff, then maybe you avoid this game. So with all that being said, what did I think of this game? Well, as I said earlier, overall, I enjoyed the game for the most part. There are some issues with it, like there are with every game, but I think in many ways, this is better than Until Dawn, which was the PS4 exclusive that Supermassive released, and this is kind of the spiritual successor to that game. I think this game solves some of the issues that Until Dawn experienced and keeps some of the issues that Until Dawn had back in 2015. But let's break this down into different categories. First, let's talk about presentation. I just gotta Say right off the bat, the graphics in this game are phenomenal. This is legit one of the best looking games I've played, at least in terms of character models. I played through the game on a PS5 and there were legit moments where I thought they cut to a live action portion of a cutscene because it looked that good. The environments and the lighting and the character models, again, do this really good job of setting the tone and setting that feel of that camp counselor horror flick. But even though the graphics were outstanding, there are still some shortfalls that come with them. For example, the character models models look amazing and there are some times where the character models themselves feel a little off. Like there are times where they're talking and you're looking at their faces and it looks like they've stuffed tobacco or chew in their lips and in their cheeks. Like they just look puffy for some reason. And it's not a consistent thing because it will change with the same character in the same conversation where one moment they'll look puffy, the next they'll look totally natural. Maybe I'm being really nitpicky, but it was just one of those things that kind of threw me for a loop every now and then. The second issue with graphics is how this game handles water. Water in this game looks 
horrible, like hilariously bad. I remember the first time I saw a character jump into the water and it splashed and I thought the game broke for a little bit. Like I thought it was screen tearing or that there was some glitch happening, but it's just how the game renders water. It looks so bad. It looks bad enough that it'll take you out of the moment, which is really immersion breaking for something like a horror game. But aside from those two issues, the game really does look great. Like there are moments and cutscenes where it just feels like you're watching a movie. It looks that photo real. There were a few moments towards the end of the game where I would load in and there'd be texture pop in or there would be texture popping in after a cutscene, but that was pretty rare and it only happened a few times. But let's talk about the story now. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to dive into any details, but for the most part, the story is about what you would expect for an homage to a teen horror flick. It's serviceable. It gets the job done. It's not going to change anyone's life based on the story that's being told. It's not bad. It's just kind of a predictable horror movie, but it kind of feels like they didn't expect it to be predictable. Like there are moments that are supposed to be these big reveals feeling plot twists that happen later in the game and there's like this dramatic crashing and music that takes place when these plot twists are revealed and it was like Oh, I thought we were already supposed to know that. We've, I thought we've known that for a few hours now. So there's some aspects where it's really predictable. But I think that's fine. I don't think anyone's really playing the game because it has an amazing story. You're playing the game because of the impact that your choices can have on the story. And that's where it gets interesting. So I really do like the choice system in this game. And I didn't really realize it, but I had actually been kind of carrying this grudge from Until Dawn because to me, the choices in that game didn't really carry any weight. And when your choice impacted the death of a character, it felt like that wasn't earned. It felt like kind of a cheap death. I specifically remember being mad at a moment in Until Dawn, and I'm not gonna spoil it if you haven't played it, even though it was from 2015, but there's a moment in that game where your character hears a noise and you have the choice to inspect the noise or to avoid it and run away. And so I chose to inspect the noise and that just prompted my character to be killed like right there in that moment. I couldn't avoid it. I, there was no quick time event to, to duck out of it or anything. They were just dead. And to me, it felt really cheap because it wasn't really like a threatening moment. There was really no build up to that. It was just like you're literally you're walking around and you heard a noise and you investigate it and you're dead. And it didn't really feel like a result of my choice. It just felt like the game wanted my character to die and so my character died. And at least in my playthrough, a lot of those types of choices are resolved in the quarry because you'll make choices. And even if you make bad choices, typically you're able to kind of escape those consequences if you perform the quick time events the right way. Now that will cascade and build so you can't continue to make bad choices, but it at least feels like your choices have more weight to them rather than just being randomly killed because you had a 50-50 chance of dying. And I think that's good because when my character dies, it puts the blame on me, not on the game. It really does feel like my ability to choose and to play the game is the deciding factor in my character's life or death, not just randomly roll of the dice. And I like that. I think that adds a lot of weight to your choices. That being said, because the story has to account for all of these different choices that you can make, eventually you start to see the seams where these stories are kind of stitched and woven together. And honestly, the job of doing that sounds awful. So props to the writers for being able to keep track of everything. That sounds like an awful Excel spreadsheet that I want nothing to do with. But it is something that I think is worth noticing and pointing out. Like there's times where you progress through the game and I had two characters that were still alive that I think were supposed to die or that could die very early. And they just kind of had their speaking roles diminished and they would randomly like walk in and out of conversations without saying anything. And I totally understand that that's probably just a symptom of having to weave all of these different variances of stories together. But again, I thought it was worth pointing out. And even in the midst of that, I think your choices still carry a lot of weight and it was compelling enough for me to play through the game pretty quickly because I wanted to see what my choices did in the story. But let's move on from the story and talk about the actual gameplay. What does the gameplay feel like for the quarry? And really the gameplay is divided into two parts. You have the kind of walking around exploratory aspect and then you have the more conversational slash quick time events that take place and I think the quick time events or QTEs are serviceable. They're fine. I don't think I really want those to be these kind of like overly complex, over the top button combination things. But on the other side, they're also really easy. Like I legitimately don't think I failed any of the quick time events throughout my entire playthrough. You basically just use your analog stick to point up, down, left, or right, or you mash the X button. And those are the quick time events that happen in the game. Like that's it. And you perform those actions to avoid tripping on a log or to climb up a ladder or whatever it might be. Or you can hold X to hold your breath and avoid getting caught. And like I said, I don't think I failed one quick time event in the entire game. They're very, very easy. 
But on the flip side, I think I would have been frustrated at the game, like if it was presenting these overly complex push square, triangle, circle, R1, L2, th that would have been annoying to me. So I guess I would rather have very simple than very, very complex. And the second piece of gameplay, the more exploratory aspect, I think is what needs to be addressed and needs quite a bit of refinement. This part of the gameplay always felt weird to me. It always felt unnatural. And I never felt scared in any of these scenarios. And there's a few reasons for that. First, the game quickly establishes that if something intense or crazy or life-threatening is going to happen, it will always happen in a cutscene with a quick time event. And so you quickly realize that if you are in control of your character and you're able to walk around, then you're safe. There's no, there's nothing that can hurt you. And there's nothing to be scared of. And for a horror game, that seems like it kind of breaks the game because it's telling you when to be scared and when not to be scared, and it never breaks that expectation. But I think they made the decision to do that, the decision to keep your character safe when you are in control of them, because you really don't have great control of your character. Your character just doesn't control that well. I mean, you're walking around with the left stick, and you're controlling your flashlight with the right stick, and it almost feels like tank controls, where you're just kind of slowly turning around and your character just kind of fumbles around and it, it just, it's so jarring because in the cutscenes you have these beautifully animated characters that look so lifelike and then you're put in control of them and they look dead. Like they don't emote on their faces. They don't say anything unless you're interacting with an object. So you have this lifeless mannequin of a character that's kind of stumbling around. Like you'll be walking and exploring through dark hallways or these, these moonlit forests and your character is just like totally stone-faced. Like no emotion, doesn't say anything. And to me that just felt really odd because the cutscenes are so good and this just felt like it needed something like a little bit of polish or something that would go in it. And so yeah, overall, I think the quarry was a lot of fun. I enjoyed my time with it, but there's definitely some aspects that need to be refined if Supermassive continues with these types of games. I think when it comes to choice-based gameplay and those types of stories, I think they've mostly nailed that. There's a little bit of refinement that could take place, but man, they do it better than most people in the industry. And I think they could take a pretty good game and make it really great if they spend some time refining what it actually feels like to play the game. I think the collectibles in the game were really good. I liked going around and collecting evidence, trying to bolster up your case. And I think the replay value of the game is great, like being able to go back through and switch up choices and try to keep everyone alive or try to kill everyone or meet somewhere in the middle and get different trophies. I think that's really cool. There's definitely a lot of fun to be had here. It could just be a lot more fun if some of these things are refined. But hey, at this point, I want to know what are your thoughts on the quarry? Did you enjoy the choice-based gameplay? Do you think I'm off in my critique about how the gameplay feels in terms of walking and exploring? Or are you maybe wanting to avoid this game because of the content that's in it? Let me know your thoughts. And hey, as with every video, I want you to know that I'm praying for you. If you are watching this video, know that I have prayed for you. And if you have a specific prayer request, you can either message me on Twitter or leave a comment here and I will pray for you specifically. So as always, thanks for watching this video. Remember that God loves you. I'm praying for you and I'll see you in the next video.